The story kicks off in a destroyed church, where a man dressed in a white coat, with a scarf hiding his face, is exploring the surroundings. He comes across an eerie tombstone that warns, If you seek death, it will find you. Curious, he digs near the tombstone and discovers unusual bones, ones with long nails and sharp teeth, suggesting they're not from ordinary humans. This man is revealed to be a doctor, named Park Chi Song. He is currently stationed near the border of a place called Kachinia, offering medical help. Another doctor there informs Ji Song that he should evacuate because rebel forces are approaching and it's dangerous. A soldier echoes the same advice. However, Ji Song remains resolute. He recalls a young patient who urgently needs surgery to remove a bullet. Despite the risks, he decides to stay. Urging others to leave for their safety, he heads into an operating room, its entrance barricaded with furniture. Ji Song is determined to save the child, no matter the impending danger. In the midst of the pressing situation, Ji Song consumes a mysterious green pill. Moments after ingesting it, an extraordinary transformation occurs. He starts exhibiting enhanced abilities, notably an X-ray vision of sorts which allows him to peer inside the little girl's body, identifying her injuries, and ensuring a successful operation. No sooner had he finished the surgery than he became aware of the encircling rebels outside the operation room. As they aimed their weapons at him, Ji Song, undeterred by their show of force, sternly advised them to leave for their own safety. The rebels, taken aback by his boldness but not convinced, decided to assault him. Yet, just as one rebel gets close, thinking Ji Song has been overpowered, an unexpected transformation occurs. Ji Song's nails elongate and his eyes shimmer with a vivid green hue. With these newfound abilities, he manages to fend off the attackers, displaying a prowess they hadn't anticipated. The explanation behind Ji Song's mysterious powers is that he's not an ordinary human, but rather a vampire, afflicted by a special virus known as VBT-01 or the Vampire Virus. The origin of this virus and its cure are cloaked in mystery. While it bestows upon its host slower aging and impressive physical abilities, including self-healing, it also has its detriments. Ji Song is vulnerable to the early morning sunlight and intense ultraviolet rays, which can cause him grievous harm. Yet, perhaps the most challenging aspect of his condition is an insatiable thirst for blood, an urge he battles against continuously. The story takes us back to 1979, giving insight into Ji Song's past. His father, during that time, was on a mission to locate a group dressed in black, identifiable as vampires. This mysterious group, led by a man named Lee J. Wook, had a sinister objective, to capture young Ji Song, but Ji Song's father, always one step ahead, managed to elude them as baby Ji Song was safely with his mother. Furious at being outsmarted, Li Jae Wook ordered his men to end Ji Song's father's life. As time moved forward, Ji Song's life was far from typical due to the vampire virus coursing through his veins. His mother, aware of Jae Wook's intentions, decided to seclude herself and Ji Song in a remote location. In this solitude, Ji Song felt trapped and isolated with only a deer as his companion. One day, his yearning for some semblance of normalcy led him to plead with his mother to let him visit the city, wishing to buy books. After much hesitation and seeing her son's longing, she relented but instructed him to take a special homemade medicine before entering the bustling streets. Disregarding his mother's caution, Ji Song discarded the medicine. In the city, while browsing a bookstore, Ji Song's senses were tested. He noticed a woman with an injury, which immediately intensified his craving for blood. Battling his inner desires, he resisted the urge and hastily left the scene. This incident only deepened his frustration over his unusual life, a stark contrast to the freedom experienced by others. His mother, sensing his despair, consoled him with hopeful words, believing that one day Ji Song would indeed lead a life akin to ordinary humans. During one tragic night, Ji Song's mother witnessed the heart-wrenching sight of her son consumed by his uncontrollable thirst for blood, inadvertently killing his beloved pet deer. The weight of his condition bore heavily on Ji Song's heart. He even contemplated ending his misery, but each attempt was thwarted by the self-healing capabilities granted by the vampire virus. This only deepened Ji Song's anguish, making him feel trapped in a never-ending cycle of torment. One evening, as Ji Song was lost in his emotions, he inadvertently obstructed the path of a group of local thugs, Rather than stepping aside, Ji Song, fueled by his frustrations, confronted them with a defiant attitude. This audacity enraged the thugs who decided to take on Ji Song. 
Yet Jisong's heightened abilities allowed him to effortlessly dodge their attacks and retaliate, rendering a thug incapacitated with just one hit. The reigning thugs, in sheer disbelief, tried to overpower Jisong, but to no avail. When the police arrived at the scene, they found the thugs' accounts of Jisong's abilities far-fetched and disregarded their testimonies. Soon after, Jisong's anxious mother arrived, pulling him aside. She implored him to exercise caution and not to flaunt his extraordinary strength, fearing it might bring danger to his doorstep. Jisong, still grappling with his emotions, retorted that all he yearned for was a semblance of normalcy. Overwhelmed by her son's agony, tears welled up in his mother's eyes, and she embraced Jisong tightly, trying to offer solace in that moment of despair. The narrative then transitions to an operating room where a team of doctors is engrossed in a challenging surgical procedure. The main surgeon, skillfully performing these intricate operations, is identified as Jay Wook, the leader of the shadowy group clad in black. His surgical prowess earns him admiration from his peers. After successfully completing the procedure, Jay Wook retreats to relax. However, his relaxation is cut short by a call from one of his underlings, who informs him that they have located Ji Song's hideout. Jay Wook instructs them to monitor Ji Song closely. Unbeknownst to Ji Song, he is now under the watchful eyes of two squads from Jay Wook's group. Simultaneously, a family is shown enjoying a vacation in the vicinity of Ji Song's forest home. The family's young daughter, in her curiosity, ventures deeper into the forest, drawn by a rabbit. Her innocent exploration turns perilous as she finds herself surrounded by a pack of ravenous wolves. Overcome by fear, she faints. However, fortune favors her, and Ji Song intervenes just in time, fending off the wolves and saving her. Little does he know, this heroic act is witnessed by Jay Wook's spies. They deduce that Ji Song possesses pure vampire blood, a rarity that Jay Wook desperately seeks. With new orders, they are now tasked to capture Ji Song. However, their attempt to abduct Ji Song faces an obstacle. Upon reaching his home, they find only his mother. In a brave attempt to fend them off, she finds herself outpowered. As they prepare to strike her down, Ji Song bursts onto the scene, attempting a rescue. But the numbers and strength of Jay Wook's men tip the scales against him. To his horror, he watches them administer a lethal injection to his mother. But even in her weakened state, his mother has one last trick up her sleeve. She manages to activate a UV light, a vampire's nemesis. The sudden burst of UV rays provides Ji Song a window to extricate his mother from the clutches of their attackers. Regrettably, her injuries are severe, and time is not on their side. As she lies fading, she hands Ji Song a box containing a recorded message. With her final breath, she urges Ji Song to flee and discover the truths hidden within the recording. After surviving an explosion due to his indestructible nature, Ji Song, now a dedicated volunteer doctor, finds himself amidst the chaos, tending to injured soldiers. Amidst this pandemonium, his phone rings, revealing a call from his friend, Hyun Woo. Eagerly answering, Ji Song learns that the bones he discovered at the church ruins, which he believed were of those infected with the vampire virus, have associated data stored at Taman Hospital, a renowned medical facility in Korea. What adds to the intrigue, is that the hospital had been repeatedly trying to recruit Ji Song due to his exceptional medical skills. With this newfound information, Ji Song doesn't waste any time and promptly returns to Korea, meeting Hyun Woo to gather further details. Hyun Woo's investigations suggest that these remains are indeed of individuals afflicted by the vampire virus, and intriguingly, they date back to a time three years prior to Ji Song's birth. For Ji Song, this is not merely an archaeological puzzle. He hopes that these findings might pave the way to create a cure for his condition. To delve deeper into this mystery and to access all pertinent data, Ji Song decides to finally join Taman Hospital as a surgeon. On his first day, Ji Song's introduction to the hospital doesn't quite go as smoothly as planned. A hurried encounter with a female doctor results in his glasses being broken. What riles him up is not just the broken glasses, but the doctor's lack of an apology. Shaking off this minor setback, He's soon greeted by Kyung In, the hospital's manager. She is evidently thrilled to have Ji Song on board, having heard of his surgical prowess. Intent on making his stay comfortable, Kyung In is keen to accommodate Ji Song's unique needs, ensuring his dietary preferences are met and agreeing to his request of dining privately rather than in the common cafeteria. In the tense and sterile atmosphere of the operating room, the overhead lights shine brilliantly on the patient with every instrument and gesture magnified by the gravity of the situation. Yuri Top, 
confident and with a hint of arrogance, begins the procedure, determined to prove her hypothesis correct and showcase her surgical prowess to the doubters, especially to Ji Song. However, as minutes turn into what feels like hours, complications arise. The vital signs monitor begins to blip erratically. The patient's condition deteriorates rapidly, causing the entire team to go into a state of high alert. As Reita's fingers move with practiced precision, trying to rectify the situation, a thin sheen of sweat forms on her brow. The other surgeons glance at each other nervously, realizing the grave nature of the situation. Chi Song, observing from the gallery, clenches his fists, visibly fighting the urge to intervene. Yu Sub Ju, the hospital owner's father and a figure of authority, watches with a mix of concern and anticipation. The room is filled with the sound of machines, whispered instructions, and palpable tension. Rita, ever the professional, doesn't give in to panic. She redirects her team, issuing rapid-fire orders. Each surgeon and nurse responds, their years of training evident in their swift movements. Despite the obvious danger, Rita remains adamant about completing the procedure, attempting to save both her patient and her professional reputation. However, despite her valiant efforts, the patient's condition does not stabilize. The heartbeat monitor's rhythm becomes even more erratic, causing the room's atmosphere to grow more desperate. The assisting surgeons exchange worried glances, wondering if they should intervene or trust Rita's judgment. Outside the operation room, other doctors, having heard about the ongoing crisis, gather in hushed discussions. Whispers about Rita's capability and the patient's fate float around, intensifying the pressure within the operating room. Shortly after, Ji Song entered the operation room, dressed and ready to take over. This didn't sit well with Rita who believed it was her responsibility to handle the surgery. She was already in the middle of it, but Chairman Yu, seeing the situation, thought Ji Song might be better suited and asked him to step in. This decision only made Rita more frustrated. To make matters worse for her, Ji Song successfully completed the surgery, showcasing his expertise, and when he started addressing her in a casual manner, it got under her skin. Their interactions always seemed to end in disagreements, almost like a cat and mouse chase. Meanwhile, what Ji Song didn't realize was there was a bigger game being played in the background. Jae Wook, for reasons of his own, had maneuvered Ji Song into working at Taman Hospital. Jae Wook had a close connection with Suk Chu, the hospital's owner and was scheming something. With Chi Song's location now known, Jae Wook quickly summoned his team to Korea, hinting that some major showdown was on the horizon. From his mother's secret recordings, Ji Song discovered more about his unique condition linked to the vampire virus. She had hinted at dangers and people who might want to harm him, but she left out a significant detail, Jae Wook's identity. She probably did it to protect Chi Song from seeking revenge. For Ji Song, his priority was clear. He needed to find a cure. He believed the key to this cure was hidden within Taman Hospital's records. But accessing that information was turning out to be trickier than he thought. In the midst of all this, Ji Song and Rita had another disagreement. This time, it was about hiring a new nurse. Rita was against hiring her, because the nurse's mom had tragically died at their hospital. But Ji Song saw potential and immediately gave her the job. As expected, Rita wasn't pleased adding another layer to their ongoing rivalry. Walking down a hospital corridor, Ji Song suddenly felt an odd sensation. It was a tug he associated with the presence of other vampires. Intrigued, he followed this feeling and found himself in front of Jae Wook, who was passionately addressing a group of doctors. Jae Wook had just been appointed the new director of Taman Hospital. However, the vampire vibes Ji Song felt earlier faded, making him wonder if he had been mistaken. What Ji Song was unaware of was that Jae Wook had consumed a special drug that concealed his true vampire nature. Believing Jae Wook to just be a regular doctor, Ji Song chose to be polite and welcoming. Jae Wook, seizing an opportunity, asked Ji Song to fill in for another surgeon named Il Nam. Ji Song, being the dedicated doctor he was, agreed without any hesitations. But there was a twist he didn't see coming. When he was away from his room, a mysterious figure switched Ji Song's regular medicine with something else. As Ji Song began the operation post taking the medicine, he found himself struggling. The sight and scent of his patient's blood awakened his vampire cravings. This wasn't normal, and he realized something was wrong. Jae Wook, ever the actor, feigned concern, but inside he was smirking, as this was all this doing. He had hoped to see Ji Song lose control and reveal his vampire side to the world. 
Luckily, Ji Song's close friend, Hyun Woo, came to the rescue just in time. He provided Ji Song with genuine medicine, which immediately helped him regain control over his urges. With renewed focus, Ji Song continued and flawlessly completed the surgery, thwarting Jae Wook's nefarious plans. Afterward, Jae Wook, not one to be easily deterred, approached Ji Song with words of praise. He complimented Ji Song's surgical skills and generously offered any assistance Ji Song might need in the future. However, Ji Song, sensing something off and a bit annoyed by the earlier events, curtly replied that he was self sufficient. Later on, Ji Song reached out to Hyun Woo over a call, explaining the bizarre reaction he had after taking the medicine. Hyun Woo was left baffled, asserting that the medicine he provided should not have caused such an episode, hinting that perhaps some external factors were at play. Ji Song was deeply rattled trying to come to terms with what nearly happened in the operating room. His true vampire identity was almost revealed. In the midst of these troubled thoughts, Rita walked in, obviously in a mood to tease. She began making sarcastic comments about Ji Song's sudden exit during the surgery. Not in the mood for her antics, Ji Song retorted with a sharp comment about his three pet peeves. Broken ATMs when he needs cash, eggs that won't flip over, and obstructions in his path, clearly referring to Rita. As she began to walk away, stunned by his words, Ji Song took another jibe about disliking her cheap perfume. Rita was visibly angry but found herself speechless. Later at home, Ji Song and his friend, Hyun Woo, examined the suspicious medicine. Hyun Woo was sure it wasn't the one he provided, suggesting someone at the hospital switched it, probably someone aware of Ji Song's reliance on the medicine to keep his vampire side in check. The next day, Ji Song tried to review the hospital's CCTV footage to identify the person who tampered with his meds. Oddly enough, the camera malfunctioned right at that critical moment. The timing was too convenient, further deepening Ji Song's suspicions. There was another surprise waiting for the hospital staff. Jay Wook announced the formation of a new drug research team, headed by a doctor named Hei Ri. This abrupt decision set tongues wagging, as many questioned the need for such a team out of the blue. But as the hospital's director, Jay Wook's decisions were final. Little did they know, Hei-ri wasn't just any doctor. She was a trusted ally of Jay Wook and played a crucial role in his secret and sinister experiments. The atmosphere shifts as Chairman Yu takes Ji Song to meet a patient, Sister Sylvia. It's clear she's a special case because suddenly, Rita's demeanor changes. Usually at loggerheads with Ji Song, she's suddenly softer, more cooperative, a change prompted by her uncle's decision to assign her as the supporting doctor for Sister Sylvia. But when Ji Song reviews Sister Sylvia's medical files, he's not optimistic. He tells Rita that Sister Sylvia's brain tumor is advanced, and recovery chances are slim. An impassioned Rita chides Ji Song for his pessimism. Intrigued by this unexpected side of Rita, Ji Song asks about her connection to Sister Sylvia. As Rita walks away, she reveals that Sister Sylvia holds a special place in her heart. Later in Ji Song's office, Jae Wook pays another visit. He brings up Ji Song's earlier request for hospital data access, which was denied. However, in a surprising move, Jae Wook offers Ji Song the access he needs. Ji Song is taken aback, extending his hand in gratitude, though he remains cautious about Jae Wook's intentions. The storyline then cuts to a lavish dinner setting where Jae Wook and Chairman Yu are deep in discussion. The conversation's essence revolves around a personal request. Chairman Yu is gravely ill and hopes that Jae Wook, with his skills and resources, can develop a miracle drug to cure him. This reveals the real reason behind Chairman Yu's decision to appoint Jae Wook as the hospital's director, desperation and hope. Chairman Yu is willing to give Jae Wook anything he asks for in exchange for a chance at life. At his home, Ji Song and Hyun Woo are hard at work, having finally gained access to the hospital's confidential data. However, their hopes of uncovering critical information are quickly dashed, and the data they seek has vanished. Ji Song's suspicions towards Jae Wook deepen, thinking that he might be behind this. Elsewhere, Jae Wook is in a clandestine meeting with his team. The room's tension is palpable. One of his team members has blundered, risking the exposure of their vampire identities. Jae Wook's anger manifests in his full vampire form, displaying his formidable strength and power. It's an intimidating sight that has his subordinates quaking in fear. Back at Ji Song's place, his innate vampire senses tingle alerting him to the presence of another of his kind nearby. Fueled by a mix of curiosity and caution, Ji Song pursues the mysterious presence, 
but the intruding vampire proves elusive, slipping away before Ji Song can identify them. The next morning, a doorbell disrupts the usual calm at Ji Song's residence. Yun Wu opens the door to find Rita. Her reason for showing up is to demand an apology from Ji Song for his supposed insult in front of their colleagues. Ji Song, confident in his innocence, stands his ground, leading to yet another disagreement between the two. The tension between Ji Song and Rita seems like it's becoming a regular fixture in their interactions. Caught in an unprecedented situation, Ji Song senses the lurking presence of fellow vampires in his vicinity. Reacting quickly, he sends a coded message to Hyun Woo to prepare for the unexpected guests. Hyun Woo responds immediately, activating a specialized camera designed to identify vampires. Confirmation received, Hyun Woo sends Ji Song a coded signal to evacuate the premises post haste. However, Rita's persistent presence and constant chatter act as a hindrance, slowing Ji Song down. Rita, oblivious to the hidden urgency, continues to follow Ji Song, oblivious to the lurking danger and Ji Song's mounting anxiety. In the background, Jae Wook is pulling the strings, orchestrating a critical test for Ji Song. While in Rita's car, Ji Song's senses are tingling again, forcing him to hastily exit the vehicle to pursue the detected vampire presence. A rough confrontation unfolds with Ji Song's superior strength nearly overwhelming Jae Wook's minion. But the table turns abruptly as Jae Wook's subordinate pulls out a UV light flashlight, a potent weapon against vampires, incapacitating Ji Song. Another subordinate appears, wittily neutralizing Ji Song with a well-aimed injection, plunging him into unconsciousness. However, they leave him there, as Jae Wook's instructions were only to test Ji Song's abilities and reactions not to capture him. Ji Song, incapacitated and vulnerable, is discovered by a startled Rita, who quickly rushes into the hospital, bewildered by his condition. As Rita attempts to treat Ji Song, and Emily's in his physiological readings add layers to her confusion, his abnormal body temperature raising unspoken questions and suspicions in her mind. Attempting to draw his blood for further analysis, she's stopped by a rapidly awakening Ji Song, who curtly refuses her aid and, still reeling from the effects of the assault, ignores her protests and departs. His abrupt departure leaves Rita, both offended and more intrigued about the mysteries surrounding Ji Song's physical state. Upon returning home, Hyun Wu administers medication to counteract the effects of the vampire drug, admonishing Ji Song to exercise caution given the high probability of future similar incidents. Rita, still perplexed by Ji Song's inexplicable condition, recounts the experience to a friend, who is incredulous to Rita's account of Ji Song's unusual body temperature. Her first-hand experience has seeded doubts and curiosity in Rita's mind about Ji Song's true nature. This mounting curiosity drives Rita to seek out Ji Song while he is asleep, attempting to discreetly verify his body temperature. However, her stealthy investigation is interrupted as Ji Song stirs awake, prompting a flustered Rita to hastily concoct a pretext for her intrusion and leave in a hurry. Kyung in suspicions about Jae Wook's drug development team mount as their activities remain shrouded in mystery, with the team seemingly given carte blanche without any external oversight. Despite her concerns, she struggles to find allies in her endeavor to uncover the truth, with Dr. Jung showing hesitancy to get involved, although he too harbors private doubts. Jae Wook, always the strategist, implements another plan to further probe Ji Song's abilities and priorities. By involving Ji Song and Rita in an urgent organ transplant case, he creates a pressing situation that demands their full attention. And just as they seem to make progress by securing an organ donor from another hospital, Jae Wook adds a twist to the situation. He dispatches his subordinates to lead Ji Song away, testing his commitment to the patient against his urge to confront the vampires. For a moment, it appears that Ji Song falls into Jae Wook's trap, choosing the pursuit over his duty as a doctor. Jae Wook's satisfaction at this outcome is palpable, thinking he has bested Ji Song and validated his belief about Ji Song's true nature. His smugness is further amplified by the thought of replacing Ji Song in the operating room, a move that would symbolize his superiority and dominance. However, the tables turn in an unexpected twist. When Jae Wook enters the operating room, ready to bask in his perceived victory. He is taken aback to find Ji Song already there, poised and ready to perform the surgery. Jae Wook, upon seeing Ji Song in the surgery room, is visibly taken aback. His agitation is palpable, and he hastily exits the room, leaving Ji Song behind. 
Ji Song, however, doesn't waste a moment. Being an accomplished surgeon, he takes over a crucial surgery that Rita had initiated. He showcases his impeccable skills, ensuring the procedure is completed flawlessly. Post-surgery, Rita, puzzled and concerned, questions Ji Song about his abrupt departure earlier on. Ji Song, maintaining his reserved demeanor, avoids divulging personal details, emphasizing that the surgery's successful outcome was paramount. This response leaves Rita feeling unsatisfied, sensing a lack of commitment from Ji Song's end towards patients. Later, Ji Song's solitude is interrupted by a call from Hyun Wu. The news he brings is intriguing yet unsettling. Ji Song's healing abilities are advancing at an extraordinary rate, and he's growing more robust. For many, this might sound like a boon, but for Ji Song, it's a reminder of his deviation from humanity, making him despondent. The following day brings more intrigue. While at home, Rita comes across a news broadcast. The focus is on a man, accused of attacking two police officers. The striking resemblance between the man and Ji Song doesn't go unnoticed by her. Driven by this newfound suspicion, Rita discreetly follows Ji Song, hoping to gather some evidence. At one point, Ji Song almost detects her presence, but she deflects by pretending to photograph some new doctors. Rita's suspicions about Ji Song intensify. The unexplainable body temperature, his sudden disappearances, and now the uncanny similarity to the attacker on the news, all culminate in her doubts. She confides in her friend, trying to piece together the puzzle that is Ji Song. However, her friend, rather than offering insights, suggests that perhaps the pressure of her job is getting to her, implying she might need a break. The scene shifts focus to Jay Wook, who is lost in memories of the past. The story unfolds, revealing the origin of the vampire virus. Surprisingly, it wasn't created for harm. Jay Wook, Ji Song's parents, and a bespectacled doctor had initially designed it for the betterment of humanity. However, as the trio delve deeper, Ji Song's parents and the bespectacled doctor realize the potential dangers of their creation. The bespectacled doctor tried to persuade Jay Wook to abandon the project. But instead, Jay Wook became obsessed with perfecting the virus. In his fixation, he tested the virus on himself and took a dark turn, leading to the tragic deaths of the bespectacled doctor and Ji Song's parents. Elsewhere, Dr. Jung, previously tasked by Kyung Yin to monitor the new drug team, stumbles upon some information about the bespectacled doctor. The exact source and purpose of this info remain mysterious, hinting at Dr. Jung's hidden intentions. Rita spends time with Sister Sylvia, noticing her declining health. She tries to reassure Sister Sylvia that her illness isn't serious. Ji Song unexpectedly drops in during their conversation. Instead of keeping up the pretense, Ji Song reveals the truth about Sister Sylvia's health, but commits to finding a way to help her. Rita, a bit taken aback by this sudden compassionate side of Ji Song, questions his motives. Ji Song clarifies. He's merely repaying the kindness Rita showed when she helped him during his unconscious state. In the meantime, Rita finds Hei Ri, the head of the new drug team, taking a patient's blood without approval. This infuriates Rita, because it's against the rules. Hei Ri defends herself, saying that Jay Wook authorized her actions as long as the patient isn't hurt. Kyo Min, observing the scene, tells Hei Ri to apologize to Rita. Instead of apologizing, Hei Ri walks away, completely ignoring Kyung In's command, which is significant since Kyung In is the hospital manager. Feeling the need for some action, Rita talks to her uncle, Chairman Yu, about the incident and hopes that he'll reprimand Hei Ri. But he doesn't seem concerned. On another side of the hospital, Ji Song, while checking patients in a particular ward, spots an unusual mark on a patient's arm. Curious, he decides to consult Dr. Jung who promises to examine the patient. After Ji Song departs, Dr. Jung reviews some bone photos taken from a church's remains that Ji Song had discovered earlier. Rita notices strange behavior in a patient from the same ward. The patient acts zombie-like and sneaks into the medication room, attempting to drink some medicine. Rita tries to stop the patient. Ji Song sees this and is alarmed when he feels his vampire instincts kicking in earlier than expected. Concerned, Ji Song informs Hyun Wu about the early onset of his vampire mode and asks if he can increase his medication dose. Hyun Wu turns down the request, emphasizing that it might be risky for Ji Song. The scene switches to Jay Wook, who is in a dimly lit room, carefully injecting himself with a special serum. This serum has a unique ability. It can mask the vampire virus's side effects temporarily. This might explain a big mystery, why Ji Song, despite his heightened senses, 
can identify that Jay Wook is also carrying the vampire virus. As dawn breaks the next day, Dr. Jung makes his way to the free ward, acting on the information provided by Ji Song about a patient with a peculiar mark on his arm. But when he arrives, there's a surprise waiting. The mark has vanished. Puzzled, he questions the patient, who credits Rita for the miraculous recovery. This baffles Dr. Jung even more. He later meets Ji Song, sharing his disbelief about the rapid disappearance of such a distinct mark in just a day. Their intense discussion, however, is cut short in a dramatic fashion. Rita's friend rushes in, balancing a blood sample from the same mysterious patient. But in a clumsy moment, the sample crashes to the floor. Ji Song's reaction is immediate and intense. He feels a strange dizziness, indicating that there's more to his condition than he knows. But before he can ponder on this new development, chaos erupts. A restless patient in the ward is causing a scene, loudly demanding alcohol. Ji Song, trying to pacify him, finds himself getting woozy, distracted by the sight of the patient's fresh blood. The situation escalates fast. The patient, in his frenzy, lunges towards Rita. Ji Song, always the protector, jumps in to shield her, taking it to his face. Aware of his rapid healing abilities and not wanting to expose his secret, Ji Son quickly covers his injury and makes a hurried exit. Rita, however, is not far behind. Catching up, she offers to help stitch his wound. But Ji Son, hiding the fact that his injury has already healed, gently turns her down. The atmosphere in Jay Wook's room is tense. He coldly reprimands Hei Ri for a grave error in judgment, administering medication to someone with alcohol addiction. The aftermath of such a decision, he points out, can turn the patient violently aggressive. Hayri, realizing the weight of her mistake, quivers with fear, her voice barely a whisper as she apologizes. Elsewhere, Ji Song is grappling with his own internal struggle. The recent events have taken a toll on him. He finds his senses going haywire, especially when in the presence of blood. Seeking a solution, he pleads with Hyunwoo to increase the dosage of his medication, hoping it might curb the erratic reactions. But Hyunwoo, concerned for his friend's well-being, refuses. He fears that a heightened dose might severely debilitate Ji Song, making him weak and immobile. He advises Ji Song to stay away from surgeries for a while until they can ascertain the root cause of his altered condition. Unbeknownst to them, Jay Wook has been closely monitoring the situation. A CCTV footage gives him a glimpse into Ji Song's disconcerting reaction. Intrigued, he ponders over what might be ailing Ji Song, a potential chink in his armor. Rita, on the other hand, is wrestling with what she believes she witnessed, Ji Song's rapid wound healing. She confides in her friend, hoping for validation, but only receives skepticism in return. Determined to prove her point, Rita convinces her friend to accompany her and directly inspect Ji Song's wound. Upon arrival, and much to Rita's shock, Ji Song's injury appears genuine. Her friend is livid, accusing Rita of being invasive and disrespectful. The truth, however, is more complex than it appears. The wound, in reality, is expertly crafted makeup, a clever ruse by Hyun Woo to protect Ji Song's secret. In the aftermath of the ruckus, Rita watches with deep concern as security officers escort the agitated patient out of the hospital. Feeling a sense of responsibility, she tries to question the event but is met with indifferent replies about the patient's personal wishes. Yet she senses a sinister shadow behind the scenes, Jay Wook. To her dismay, the patient soon finds himself at the mercy of Jay Wook's vampire minions, an orchestrated attack unfolding on the unsuspecting victim. Feeling stifled by Jay Wook's omnipresence and authoritative control over the hospital's decisions, Rita confides in Kyung In, imploring her to speak to Chairman Yu. Much to her and Kyung In's surprise, Chairman Yu admits to entrusting complete authority to Jay Wook, considering it in the best interest of the hospital, a decision that leaves them both dumbfounded. The subsequent day heralds a new assignment for Ji Song and Rita as they are chosen to represent Taman Hospital at a seminar. Rita, seeing this as an opportunity to flaunt her report, finds her plans foiled as the limelight is stolen by Ji Song, the renowned genius doctor, leaving her overshadowed and frustrated. However, unbeknownst to Rita, Ji Song holds a fragment of her past, a memory of a little girl he once saved from a wolf attack, a girl he realizes is Rita. This revelation paints his annoying colleague in a new tender light. A fleeting moment of closeness blossoms as Ji Song finds himself carrying a heavily intoxicated Rita, who, in her drunken state, expresses a longing to reunite with her savior from the past. 
blissfully unaware that he is closer than she realizes. Amid the chaotic aftermath of the prank, Rita's observant gaze fixated on Jisong, noting the absence of the plaster covering his wound. This tiny detail only intensified her growing skepticism regarding Jisong's true nature. The day's dawning found Jisong faced with a decision. Following the beckoning of an enigmatic message from one of Jae Wook's subordinates, he chose to journey alone to a secluded rendezvous. Anticipation turned to alarm when he found himself entangled in an elaborate trap, one that exploited his aversion to blood. As he grappled with his overwhelming reaction, he was left vulnerable to Jae Wook's subordinates. Death seemed imminent for Ji Song until a shadowy figure emerged, displaying formidable strength and skill to overpower Jae Wook's vampire henchmen. The unexpected intervention came from Jae Wook himself. The revelation was jarring for Ji Song. In the midst of the whirlwind confrontation, Jae Wook's surprising declaration that he wasn't Ji Song's enemy added another layer of complexity to their relationship. Elaborating on his narrative, Jae Wook shared the tragic tale of his family's brutal demise at the hands of vampires and unveiled his mission to purge the world of such malevolent creatures. Ji Song, touched by the similarity in their tragic histories, extended a tentative olive branch of trust. However, the recounting of this unexpected alliance with Hyun Woo raised red flags. Hyun Woo couldn't shake off his suspicions, especially when confronted with the anomaly of Jae Wook's distinctly human body temperature. On the other side, Rita's growing suspicions about Ji Song were taking a toll on their interactions. Every unexplainable detail, every missing scar, and every odd behavior from Ji Song seemed to reinforce her skepticism. While she yearned to confide in her close friend, Dr. Choi, the fear of being dubbed delusional or dismissed held her back. Dr. Choi, being perceptive, sensed the growing distance between Rita and Ji Song, but didn't probe too deeply. It wasn't until Ji Song himself approached her, seeking information about Rita's past, that the floodgates opened. The tragic tale of Rita's parents' demise, combined with the painful memories Ji Song had of her as a child, helped Ji Song piece together the emotional puzzle Rita was. Their next encounter was charged with emotion. Rita's attempts at evasion were met with Ji Song's plea for understanding. As she poured out her fears, the haunting visions, the echoes of trauma from her parents' loss, and her desperate wish to cling to sanity, Ji Song offered a gentle revelation. He explained his mysterious condition as a rare, unexplainable disease, urging her to see past it and focus on their present relationship. But Rita, ever the skeptic, sought tangible proof. In a bold move, she unveiled the plaster on Ji Song's face, expecting another disappearing scar. This time, however, the evidence aligned with Ji Song's narrative, leaving Rita in a whirl of emotions. Ji Song's departing smile seemed to say that for now, he had gained a small victory in their complex stance of trust and doubt. In the meantime, Ji Song was preparing for surgery and took his usual medicine. But as he was about to begin, a powerful craving for blood overwhelmed him even though he had already taken his special vampire medicine. Just as things were about to go wrong, Jae Wook intervened and helped Ji Song regain control. Ji Song observed that Jae Wook seemed to have a natural ability to resist bloodlust without relying on any medication, and this piqued his curiosity. Later, Ji Song visited Jae Wook's residence to get some answers. Jae Wook revealed that while he still consumes blood, he procures it from a unique supplier who processes the blood until it's white and void of its usual appearance. Additionally, Jay Wook consumes a blend of specific vitamins and drugs that assist him in suppressing the urge for blood. Interestingly, he had also crafted a drug that gives him a human's body temperature. Jay Wook recommended Ji Song adopt this method for himself. Ji Song took a moment to think it over, but memories of his mother's commitment to avoiding blood consumption held him back. He was resolved to continue with his own techniques, even if they weren't always effective. While back at the hospital, a curious Kyung In was digging deep into Jae Wook's activities, trying to unravel the mysteries surrounding him. However, her efforts didn't go unnoticed. Jae Wook soon found out and sternly advised her to stop prying into his matters, hinting at the potential consequences if she continued. On the other hand, Ji Song and Rita had grown closer, their relationship less tumultuous than before. However, they were soon faced with an emergency in the free ward. A patient with strange symptoms suddenly deteriorated, bleeding profusely. Ji Song was initially taken aback and felt a bit dizzy at the sight of the blood. But Rita, realizing his discomfort, firmly held his hand, 
helping him overcome the urge to succumb to his vampire instincts. Uncertain about the patient's condition, Ji San requested Nurse Kim to contact Dr. Zhang. Unexpectedly, He Ri arrived with an order to quarantine the patient, alleging a potential virus infection. Rita and Ji San were skeptical of He Ri's motives, but found themselves powerless when Jae Wook arrived and confirmed the patient's quarantine. Frustrated and feeling responsible for the patient, Rita and Ji San consulted with Dr. Jung. He hypothesized that the patient had unusually lost all antibodies, which had previously been strong enough to combat any illness. Dr. Jung suspected the patient might have inadvertently received a particular drug, a rarity. To confirm, they needed to examine the patient, but Hei Ri had already taken control of the situation. Rita resolved to speak to her uncle, Chairman Yu, about the patient's situation. However, Kyungin informed her that Chairman Yu had surprisingly rejected all proposals related to the new drug development team and granted them full access despite the recent incident. This unusual decision left Rita bewildered. Furthermore, she learned that Ji San was contemplating leaving the hospital, a piece of information that unsettled her deeply. The scene shifted to Jay Wood's house, where he was engaged in a conversation with a mysterious woman. Jay Wook divulged his deep interest in Ji Song, believing him to be the possessor of a perfected vampire virus. Ji Song had not only survived but had thrived since infancy, unlike others who had succumbed to the virus. Jay Wook had conducted experiments with other infected individuals, but all had met their demise, unlike Ji Song. Back to Rita, her curiosity about Ji Song continued to gnaw at her. As she delved into literature on vampire characteristics, she found striking parallels between Ji Song's experiences and the traits commonly attributed to vampires. Despite this, she tried to rationalize it all by reminding herself that Ji Song could eat, drink, and walk in the sunlight. Ji Song paid a visit to Dr. Jung's room, where he noticed documents related to the vampire virus. He soon learned that Dr. Jung, in secret collaboration with Dr. Choi, Reta's friend, was working on a project to develop a drug. Ji Song was taken aback but recognized the importance of the matter. He confronted Dr. Jung, seeking to unravel the true motives behind his actions. Nonetheless, the tension at the hospital was palpable. Rita, trying to keep a sense of order in a chaotic situation, knew that preserving the patient's well-being was paramount. Even though she had witnessed Ji Song's extraordinary recuperative powers, she chose not to reveal this revelation perhaps out of a sense of protecting his secret, or simply because she needed more time to process the astonishing sight she had just witnessed. On the other hand, Ji Song's frustration was mounting. He recognized that there was more to the patient's condition than met the eye, and the hospital security officers were acting suspiciously. His determination to uncover the truth clashed with the officers' veiled threats, creating a tense standoff. Rita's intervention, while driven by a desire to prevent a worsening of the situation, only added to the complex web of emotions and uncertainties that now surrounded them. While in the shadows, Jay Wook continued to assert his dominance and instill fear in his subordinates. They dared not defy him, knowing that he possessed a formidable power that could spell doom for those who crossed him. Back at Ji Song's house, a startling revelation emerged when Hyun Wu, after examining the white blood sample consumed by Jay Wook, uncovered a deeply disturbing truth. The primary component of the white blood sample was the blood of a young child. This shocking discovery sent shockwaves through Ji Song and Hyun Wu, for it was not only illegal but also profoundly unethical. Jay Wook's explanation of purchasing the blood did little to mitigate the horror of such a revelation. Meanwhile, Rita's health appeared to be deteriorating, and she struggled to come to terms with the baffling sight of Ji Song's rapid healing abilities. Despite Ji Song's attempts to offer comfort and concern, Rita remained distant her thoughts consumed by the unsettling realization that Ji Song might no longer be a normal human being. Having glimpsed Dr. Jung and Dr. Choi's covered research into the vampire virus, Rita's curiosity got the better of her, and she sought answers from Dr. Choi. Initially hesitant to divulge the secret research conducted with Dr. Jung, Dr. Choi eventually relented under Rita's persistence. He shared the details of their investigation into the possible existence of the vampire virus. Armed with this knowledge, and having witnessed Ji Song's potential characteristics in line with Dr. Choi's findings, Rita found herself believing that Ji Song might indeed be a vampire virus sufferer. Overwhelmed by her illness and this newfound revelation, Rita's condition took a severe turn, and she was compelled to leave the hospital early. 
However, the prospect of Ji-Song coming to her home to check on her condition left her apprehensive and uncertain. When Ji-Song stood before her house, Rita put on a facade of recovery, attempting to shoo him away. However, Ji-Song was not easily fooled and insisted on entering to take care of her. At that moment, Rita could no longer contain her curiosity and confronted Ji-Song, admitting that she had witnessed his remarkable ability to heal when he saved the patient. She demanded to know what Ji-Song truly was. Recognizing the futility of hiding his secret any longer, Ji Song revealed that he had contracted a virus as a child that set him apart from normal humans. This condition had forced him and his mother into isolation in a forest, leading to a sense of desperation. It was only when he saved a girl from a pack of wolves that his perspective changed. Hearing Ji Song's confession brought tears to Rita's eyes as she realized that he was the boy from her past, the one she had been searching for. Deeply moved, she apologized for ever thinking of Ji-Song as an evil creature. Overcome with emotion, Rita eventually drifted off to sleep, and Ji-Song gently stripped her hair as she rested. The following day, Rita awoke to find Ji-Song still by her side, having spent the night watching over her. Their bond had grown stronger, and Rita mustered the courage to ask Ji-Song if she could touch his face to determine his body temperature. However, this intimate moment was witnessed by Dr. Choi, would come to check on his friend Rita. Overwhelmed by embarrassment, Rita turned red as Dr. Choi discreetly left the scene. In the hospital, Ji Song received an urgent call from Hyun Wu, who instructed him to check his laptop for important information. Hyun Wu revealed that he had found an old article about the optometrist, who happened to be Dr. Jung's father. He explained that if there was a photo showing the optometrist with Ji Song's parents and Jae Wook, it could suggest that these four individuals were involved in the research or creation of the vampire virus. Upon learning this startling information, Ji Song approached Dr. Jung and requested to see the optometrist's journal, which Dr. Jung currently held. He stressed the significance of this document to his quest for answers. Initially, Dr. Jung was hesitant, but eventually agreed when Ji Song mentioned that his parents were the ones photographed with the optometrist. But their conversation was abruptly halted when Dr. Choi informed them that doctors were no longer permitted to enter the free ward and examine patients there. Dr. Jung became increasingly convinced that the patients were being used as experimental subjects by the new drug development team. Determined to investigate further, Dr. Jung and Ji Song headed to the free ward. However, they faced resistance from the hospital's security officers, who were under Jae Wook's command. Ji Song had to put up a struggle to gain access. Chairman Yu, along with Jae Wook and Hei Ri, arrived on the scene, preventing Dr. Jung and Ji Song from entering the free ward. Chairman Yu issued strict regulations without consulting anyone, including a blanket ban on all doctors entering the free ward. Rita protested her uncle's senseless decision, but Chairman Yu disregarded her entirely. Moreover, Hei Ri persuaded one of Ji Song's patients, suffering from a malignant disease, to take her homemade medicine by promising a cure without Ji Song's knowledge. As Ji Song grappled with the complex emotions stirred by Jae Wook's revelation, his anger slowly simmered into a state of contemplation. He couldn't ignore the gravity of Jae Wook's vision, one that promised to revolutionize medicine and potentially end his own affliction. The prospect of a cure for his condition was tantalizing, but it came at an unsettling cost. The lives of countless innocent patients were subjected to Jae Wook's unorthodox methods. The sight of his patients showing signs of improvement after taking Hei Ri's medication added weight to Jae Wook's words. Ji San couldn't help but wonder if this was the solution he had been seeking for so long. The internal struggle between his desire for a cure and his moral principles intensified. However, when the news of a patient's death reached Ji Song's ears, he couldn't dismiss the blatant disregard for human life displayed by Jae Wook's subordinates. It was a harsh reality check that brought him back to his senses. Ji Song realized that no noble goal could ever justify the needless sacrifice of innocent lives. Dr. Jung, recognizing the perilous path Jae Wook was treading, emphasized the urgency of investigating the patient's death. Ji Song understood the importance of uncovering the truth behind Jae Wook's actions and reassessing his own beliefs. Ji Song hatched a risky plan to investigate the patient's death and uncover the truth about Jae Wook's illicit experiments. He instructed Hyun Woo to feign death so that he could access the morgue and examine the deceased patient's body discreetly. With this daring strategy, Hyun Woo managed to assess the condition of the patient's body and relay the findings to Ji Song and Dr. Jung. 
the confirmation of Dr. Jung's suspicions about Jay Wook's unethical experiments was a grim reality that sent shockwaves through their group. However, due to the limited scope of Hen Wu's examination, Dr. Jung still required a blood sample from the patient to further his research and expose Jay Wook's activities. Meanwhile, Kyung In, sharing the same objective, enlisted the help of a new doctor named Dr. Min. Dr. Min, being new to the hospital, enjoyed a lower level of scrutiny from Jay Wook's security personnel. This allowed Dr. Min to successfully collect the crucial blood samples from patients who had been administered drugs by Hei Ri, all of which Dr. Jung needed for his investigation. As Dr. Min made a daring exit through security, the situation became tense. Dr. Jung feared that their efforts might be thwarted and rushed to aid Dr. Min, who was on the brink of being forcibly detained. Ji Song shared Dr. Jung's anxiety, particularly because Dr. Min had become involved at his urging. Much to their relief, Jay Wook opted for a less severe response, merely issuing a warning letter to Dr. Min for his indiscretion. However, this gentle reprimand concealed a darker truth. Dr. Min, as it turned out, was an undercover agent of Jay Wook, cunningly concealing his loyalty to the hospital's sinister director. He had been entrusted with the vampire virus by Jay Wook himself, making him one of the most faithful members of Jay Wook's inner circle. In a shocking revelation, it was revealed that Dr. Min had been the one to tamper with Ji Song's medication in an earlier incident. He had also been the assailant who shot Ji Song during the pursuit of Jay Wook's other subordinates. The revelation about Dr. Min's loyalty to Jay Wook sent shockwaves through the group, and Hei Ri, who had her own agenda, attempted to escape with a blood sample from the study. However, Jay Wook swiftly caught wind of her betrayal and launched a merciless attack on Hei Ri. With Dr. Min being a hidden spy in their midst, Jay Wook gained insights into the plans of manager Kyung Yin and Dr. Jung. Despite the escalating danger, Dr. Jung relocated his research operations to Ji Song's house, where the four of them could continue their efforts to decipher Jay Wook's true intentions. Amid the unfolding chaos, Ji Song and Rita found rare moments of intimacy. Ji Song, infatuated with the budding romance, willingly complied with Rita's requests, even enduring the activity he despised the most clothes shopping. However, their newfound warmth was short-lived. Dr. Min, the malevolent infiltrator, delivered disheartening news. Sister Sylvia's condition had deteriorated significantly, leaving Ji Song helpless due to his persistent dizziness when exposed to blood. He was incapable of performing the surgery needed to help Sister Sylvia. Overwhelmed by desperation and unable to accept losing Sister Sylvia, Rita implored Ji Song to donate his blood in hopes of curing Sister Sylvia's illness. Ji Song, hesitant and unconvinced that his blood would be a cure, initially declined Rita's request. But a glimmer of hope emerged when Ji Song received positive news from Hyun Wu. Hyun Wu had successfully developed a medicine that could prevent Ji Song from experiencing dizziness when confronted with blood, potentially allowing him to save Sister Sylvia without endangering himself. With urgency and determination, Ji Song hurried to perform the operation alongside Rita to save Sister Sylvia. Ji Song's surgical genius shone through as he successfully carried out the procedure, leaving Rita deeply grateful for his unwavering dedication. Little did they know, the decline in Sister Sylvia's condition had been orchestrated by Dr. Min, at Jay Wook's behest, as a means to teach Ji Song and the others a lesson for interfering with his plans. Jay Wook had even ordered his subordinates to harm Rita, a revelation that deeply concerned Ji Song. When Rita found herself in grave danger, Targeted by one of Jay Wook's subordinates, Ji Song rushed to her rescue. However, the situation took a sinister turn as the subordinate took Rita hostage. Out of concern for her safety, Ji Song extended an invitation for Rita to stay at his house temporarily. During her time there, Rita uncovered some of Ji Song's peculiar habits, such as the need to sleep in a special bed to maintain a normal body temperature. She also learned that Ji Song couldn't discern the flavors of salty or sweet foods only being able to appreciate the taste of coffee. Back at the hospital, Ji Song received a visit from Dr. Jung, who disclosed that he had been attacked by a mysterious individual who demanded he cease his research. In response, Ji Song finally decided to confide in Dr. Jung about his vampire-like condition. Later, when Dr. Jung encountered the same mysterious individual, one of Jay Wook's subordinates, Ji Song sprang into action, attempting to apprehend the assailant. Although the subordinate managed to escape, Ji Song began to piece together that the mastermind behind these incidents was none other than Jay Wook himself. 
Ji Song then presented incriminating photos that depicted Jay Wook with his parents and the optometrist, revealing their involvement in past research. Despite the mounting evidence, Jay Wook continued to deny his involvement in the past research, claiming he was a victim of the optometrist's greed. Lacking concrete proof, Ji Song struggled to refute Jay Wook's assertions. His primary goal was to convince Dr. Jung, who remained skeptical about the existence of the vampire virus. However, when Dr. Jung witnessed Ji Song's remarkable self-healing ability, he became determined to find a cure for what his father, the optometrist, had sought. Witnessing Dr. Jung's earnest commitment, Ji Song decided to take matters into his own hands to uncover the truth about Jay Wook. In an unexpected turn of events, Ji Song, accompanied by his subordinates, confronted Jay Wook at his home. They managed to paralyze Jay Wook, forcing him to reveal his true identity as the mastermind behind the attacks on Ji Song. After Ji Song departed, a furious Jay Wook vented his anger on his subordinates for their failure. Amidst these intense developments, Ji Song and Rita grew closer, their feelings for each other becoming increasingly undeniable. The following day, Ji Song, no longer concerned about hospital regulations, boldly entered the free ward guarded by Jay Wook's security officers. There, he skillfully incapacitated the guards, allowing him to obtain the blood sample required by Dr. Jung. With this critical piece of evidence, Dr. Jung could now confirm that Jay Wook was indeed developing a vampire virus in his quest for perfection, with the goal of transforming everyone into beings like himself. Jay Wook, aware that his secret was no longer safe, began devising a new plan. He instructed his subordinates to replace Rita with a person named Ji for their experiments on each patient. Unbeknownst to Jay Wook, Jay had his own agenda to develop a vampire virus for his personal use, aiming to become perfect like Ji Song. Dr. Min, who had concerns about a young child patient he saw as a sister, disagreed with Jay Wook's plan to use patients as experimental subjects. Meanwhile, Ji Song continued his investigation into Jay Wook's true identity. He made a shocking discovery that Jay Wook was responsible for the murder of his parents. However, when Ji Song attempted to exact revenge on Jay Wook, he was swiftly defeated as Jay Wook's strength exceeded his by far. Dr. Jung, learning that his father had also fallen victim to Jay Wook's greed, was consumed by anger. Ji Song advised caution, acknowledging that they were currently powerless against Jay Wook, who had formidable subordinates and significant influence within the hospital. Ji Song urged Dr. Jung to focus on their drug research to thwart Jay Wook's sinister plan. As the patients subjected to experiments began displaying aggressive behavior, Dr. Jung and Dr. Choi were forced to concentrate on evading them before they all transformed into vampires. Amidst these tumultuous events, Ji Song and Ri Ta's relationship reached a new milestone as they officially began dating, sealing their newfound affection with their first kiss. Dr. Min, witnessing the child patient he had come to regard as a sister still being subjected to experimentation, began to harbor deep disappointment in Jay Wook. He felt compelled to expose Jay Wook's intentions to Ji Song, driven by a sense of love that had developed in his heart for Ji Song. Dr. Min was aware that Ji Song was already romantically involved with Rita, but his feelings couldn't be denied. While Jay Wook, frustrated by Ji Song's constant interference with his plans, escalated his actions by ordering his subordinates to launch an attack on Ji Song's house, where only Hyun Wu was present at the time. Fortunately, armed with various tools to repel vampires, Hyun Wu received assistance from Ji Song, who managed to paralyze Jay Wook's subordinates, attempting the assault. In the shadows, Jay had been secretly plotting his own agenda, using Chairman Yu as a guinea pig for his rudimentary research. Chairman Yu, growing impatient and fearing that his condition would deteriorate if he waited for Jay Wook, placed his trust in Jay and agreed to undergo the experimental treatment. This decision, unbeknownst to Chairman Yu, deeply angered Jay Wook, who instructed his subordinates to locate Chairman Yu and apprehend Jay. In the midst of these confrontations, she proved to be a formidable adversary, defeating Jay Wook's other subordinates and seizing the results of his research, further fueling Jay Wook's fury. In the meantime, Hyun Wu, in response to the attack by Jay Wook's subordinate, crafted a perfume with a unique property. It induced immediate coughing in vampires upon inhalation. When Ji Song encountered Dr. Min, the latter began coughing, prompting Ji Song to realize that Dr. Min was, in fact, a vampire like himself and likely one of Jay Wook's subordinates. Despite this revelation, Ji Song refrained from confronting Dr. Min directly, 
choosing instead to maintain trust in him. Dr. Min, torn by guilt and a desire to confess everything to Ji Song, held back out of fear that Ji Song would come to despise him. On another note, Chairman Yu's health rapidly deteriorated after being injected with an unknown substance by Jay Wook. Rita, emotionally overwhelmed and convinced that Jay Wook was responsible for her uncle's suffering, received a flash drive from Chairman Yu. To her shock and disbelief, the contents of the drive revealed that her parents had been killed by Chairman Yu himself, driven by greed for their property. This revelation shattered Rita's trust in her uncle, the person she had believed in the most. Before Chairman Yu could explain further, he succumbed to his condition and passed away. Following the discovery of Ji's research results, Jay Wook's subordinates located Jay. However, Jay Wook didn't act immediately. Instead, he engaged in a conversation with Jay, who informed him that the key to the success of the drug Jay Wook desired lay in obtaining a blood sample from Ji Song. Ji emphasized that everything Jay Wook wanted was tied to Ji Song's blood. Jay Wook, intrigued by this information, granted Ji the opportunity to obtain the desired results by any means necessary. Meanwhile, Hyun Wu finally developed an antidote for individuals suffering from the vampire virus. However, upon discussing it with Dr. Jung, they realized that the chances of Ji Song's survival were extremely low if they administered the antidote. Both were reluctant to take the risk, as it could potentially result in Ji Song's death. On the road, Hyun Wu encountered Ji and Jae Wook's subordinates, who subsequently brought him to Ji Song's house. Ji issued a stern demand for Ji Song to come if he wanted to see his best friend, Hyun Wu, alive. However, due to Ji's psychopathic nature, he killed Hyun Wu before Ji Song's arrival. Ji Song, upon discovering Hyun Wu's lifeless body, was overwhelmed by grief and anger. Driven by fury, Ji Song ventured alone to Jae Wook's residence. There he confronted Jae Wook and his subordinates, but they easily immobilized him. Jae Wook cunningly threatened to harm the woman Ji Song loved, Red Ta, effectively paralyzing Ji Song and compelling him to leave behind the blood sample Jae Wook desired. After Ji Song's departure, Jae Wook turned on Jae as he felt betrayed by him. As Jae Wook believed that his plans had come to fruition, he was blindsided by Dr. Min, who absconded with all the results of his experiments. Faced with limited options, Jae Wook ordered his subordinates to kidnap Rita because he was certain that Dr. Min would come to her rescue. Rita was taken to Jae Wook's headquarters while Ji Song received the news and rushed to the scene. However, Ji Song, already appearing weak, seemed powerless against Jae Wook. Dr. Min arrived, appealing for Ji Song's release. Jae Wook attempted to attack Dr. Min, but his subordinates intervened. Subsequently, Jae Wook attempted to stab Ji Song with a drug capable of killing a vampire, but Dr. Min blocked the attempt. Ji Song seized the opportunity to inject himself with the antidote to the vampire virus, which Dr. Jung had successfully developed. However, Jae Wook was unwilling to give up and managed to inject Ji Song with a vampire-killing drug. In the final moments, Ji Song was on the brink of death, and he asked Rita to take him to the rooftop of the building because he wanted to witness the dawn's light before his passing. Meanwhile, Jae Wook, still alive but reverted to his original elderly form, drew his last breath. Rita stayed with Ji Song, waiting for the break of dawn. As the sun's rays illuminated the horizon, a heart-wrenching cry of sorrow escaped from Rita, signaling that Ji Song had passed away. The scene transitions to several months or years after the incident, and Rita is now on vacation in Europe. One night, she finds herself on a deserted road, and a shadowy figure begins to approach her. It becomes apparent that this figure is a vampire intent on attacking Rita. However, just as the situation seems dire, another man appears on the scene. To Rita's astonishment, the man frightens away the vampire horde. This man is none other than Park Ji Song, who has transformed into a vampire hunter. As the movie concludes, the story leaves us with this unexpected twist and the prospect of new adventures in the world of vampires and hunters. The moral of the story is don't trust your uncle too much. He might be plotting against you with vampire experiments.